Welcome back to part five. In this part, we'll use what we've covered in this module to do a few exercises. For our first exercise, we'll write a full program that reads in three integer values and determines the maximum among those three, printing it out. First, let's write the boilerplate. I'll include the standard libraries. And our main function. Now let's read in the three integers as command line arguments. If they don't provide three values, then we give them an error message and exit on them. Now that we have all three values, we need to determine which one is the greatest. So let's do a comparison based on the first two. At this point in the program, we know that A is at least as big as B. So we simply need to compare it with C to see if it's bigger than C or not. This nested if statement achieves that purpose. In the first print statement, we know that A is both greater than B and it's greater than C, therefore it's the maximum. In the second print statement, we know that A is greater than B, but also that C is greater than A. Thus, it's the maximum. If A is not greater than or equal to B, then it's clearly not necessarily the maximum. So we compare B with C. If B is greater than C, then it's the maximum. Otherwise, the final third case is that C is the maximum. Let's compile and test this. Our error checking and input validation works. Let's try it with three different values. And it seems to work. This shouldn't be our only test case though. We're doing ad hoc testing here, which we should still have what's called good code coverage. That is, we should do as many tests as we need to make sure that all of the pieces of our code work. Testing with the same three numbers, but in different orders, will ensure that other lines of code are actually tested. It still works. And now we've found an error. Let's go back over our code. Our first condition evaluates to true because 20 is greater than or equal to 10. Our second condition evaluates to false because 20 is not greater than or equal to 30. And so this statement ends up getting executed. But at this point, B is not the maximum, C is. Let's go ahead and try again. Now, I'll wanna do some regression testing. That is, I'm going to want to repeat the testing that I did before to make sure that my changes didn't cause any new bugs. And now let's try the errant test case. And the rest. I tried every possible permutation of three different numbers. That's not all the possibilities though. Some of the numbers could have been repeated. All those ad hoc test cases give me a high confidence that the code is now correct. How might we improve this code though? First of all, let's refactor it to remove redundant code. I have a lot of print statements here performing the same operation on different variables. Not only that, but I have nested conditionals, which can probably be combined using the logical AND operator to connect them. First, let's create one variable to represent the maximum value. We'll initialize it to A under the assumption that A is the maximum value, and then compare it to the other two values.
Now, if B is greater than or equal to A, and B is greater than or equal to C, then it's the maximum, so we make a reassignment. Otherwise, if C is greater than both the other two, then we make an assignment for it. There is no else statement here because we initialize max to A. If neither of these two AND conditions hold, then A is the maximum, but we've already set it that way. This allows us to have a single print statement. Printing out the maximum value. This is a lot more compact code, a lot simpler code, and a lot easier to read. But it still needs to be retested. I won't go through all the tests here, but you get the idea. Ad hoc testing has its uses, but it's not something that you want to do a lot of in practice because it's a lot of manual work. Instead, you would want to write more formal test cases in a test framework that are repeatable and automated. Let's look at the program one last time for potential additional simplifications. Since we've already set the maximum to be A, all we need to do is determine whether or not B or C is greater than the maximum that we've already set. This can simplify the first if statement. If B is greater than A, then we reassign the value of max to B. Now instead of an else if statement, we create a separate if statement. In one of the conditions I used greater than or equal to, and in the other I used strictly greater than. Either one would work, but for consistency's sake, we should just use one. If they happen to be equal, the logic will still produce the maximum number. We didn't use an else if condition here because they're not mutually exclusive. It's possible that B is still greater than A and that C is still greater than B. So we need to check both of those things. As our second program, let's write a program that reads in a decibel level from the user and gives them a description of the sound level based on the following categories. I'll create a new file. We'll go ahead and cut and paste some of the boilerplate. We'll check for the first sound level here. 0 to 60 is quiet. So if decibel is greater than or equal to zero, and decibel is less than or equal to 60, then we'll print quiet. The next level up is conversational. These two categories are mutually exclusive, so we'll use a series of else if statements. The next 71 to 90 is loud. Now before we continue, let's think about this for a second. In the second else if condition, we know something already. We know that decibel does not lie between 0 and 60. We know that it's at least greater than 60, or that it's a negative value, which is invalid. We don't need that first condition checking if the decibel is greater than 60. Consequently, we can really simplify this expression and the one after it. Because each one of these is mutually exclusive, we know that if we got to this point, that it must be at least 60 and it must be at least 70. So we just need to check on the upper end. Let's finish it out. Now let's go ahead and test this. A 
a value in the quiet range works, a value in the conversational range works, I did forget an inline character, but otherwise, for the most part, they all work. But what about some corner cases? For example, what about zero? That's reasonable. What about negative values? Conversational. Let's run through the program and see why this is. When I entered a value of negative 10, the first if condition evaluated to false because negative 10 is less than zero and so it doesn't fall within the range of zero to 60. However, my simplification in the second conditional statement evaluates to true. A decibel of negative 10 is certainly less than or equal to 70. So that ends up being true. It's the first one that ends up being true. And so it incorrectly printed conversational. Negative decibel values are actually not valid input. So how do we deal with this? We probably need to be checking for invalid values up front. We could do this as part of this if else if block, or we could do it separately. If I left it as is, both the error and conversational would be printed. I want to ensure that I'm not going to go to the rest of the program if this error condition is true. So we'll go ahead and exit here. Let's try again. And now it works. Another corner case. What if we have a value that's not defined by the category table that we had? It ends up not printing anything. That's because none of these conditional statements evaluates to true. The very last one, less than or equal to 194, is the one that's checked and it evaluates to false. So we don't end up printing anything because I didn't put a default else condition here. Let's go ahead and add that now, in addition to correcting our spelling. And try again. Now, any value that we try will give us some sort of output. As a review, remember the most specific condition should come first in an if-else-if if statement. Having a final else statement is optional, but in many cases you do want it. Remember that the first conditional that evaluates to true in an if-else-if if statement is the one and only one that gets executed. As a final example, let's write a program that takes in three values and determines whether or not they form a valid triangle. Three values form a valid triangle if and only if the sum of the length of any two sides is strictly greater than the length of the third side. Furthermore, any valid triangle can be characterized as either equilateral, isosceles, or scalene. An equilateral triangle is one with all three equal sides. An isosceles triangle is one with two equal sides where the third is not equal to the first two. And a scalene triangle has different values for each one of its sides. I've already started the program here. The first thing I want to do is make sure that they're valid values. The side of a triangle must be positive. Here I'm using a series of OR statements to check all three inputs at once. Now let's check to see if they form a valid triangle. Again, the sum of any two sides, for example, A plus B, must be strictly greater than the third side, C. We look at all three combinations here. If any one of those conditions is false, then it's not a valid triangle. If it is a valid triangle, we need to check what type it is. Recall that an equilateral triangle has all three sides are being equal.
I didn't do a third comparison between A and C because if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then certainly it's the case that A is equal to C. An isosceles triangle has two sides that are equal. We only had three conditions combined with ORs. This is because we're using an else if statement. If we're at this point in the code, then we know that all three sides are not equal. So it suffices to check if any two of the sides, AB, AC, or BC are equal in order to determine that it's an isosceles triangle. The only other possibility is that it's scalene. The order in which we check these things allowed us to have really simple code. We'll leave testing this code as an exercise. 